there, welcome back to Gaining Vision. I'm Melanie. Thank you so much for clicking. To my returning subscribers, thank you for your continuous support. If you're new to the channel, welcome. When I first came across Solid Tourist's video about the community school, I was inspired by Sarah and all she was doing to help the community. As an educator, I wanted to get involved and I reached out to her and Today's session was the first of many that we'll be working on together to help the teachers learn what they need to best support the learners in the community school. I want to thank Sarah for this opportunity, allowing me to be a part of her journey and the community school. Enjoy the video. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. My name is Melanie Tanyut Malo, and a little bit about myself. I connected with Sarah after I saw the great work that sh herself and you guys are doing at the community school on Wadamaya's video on YouTube. I've been thrilled to see the progress that you guys have made. I am in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. And I also have uh, been a teacher for 25 years. Yes, okay, I'm a little old. Shh, don't tell anybody, okay? <laughs> but I have taught many different types of learners over the years from regular ch uh, children and children with special needs. It's exciting for me to have an opportunity to share our knowledge with you today, but I'd like to introduce my team so that you know who's in the room with you. Sean? Hi, everybody. My name's Sean Pickard. I've been an associate of Melanie since 2018. My specialty is actually teaching individuals how to record audio and uh, things of that nature. So I get to have fun with the sound effects and things like that, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be the guy making noise. Melanie? Thanks, Sean. And my other colleague is Arlene. Arlene, please go ahead. Good morning from Canada. Good afternoon. My, again, my name is Arlene Samuel, and I met Melanie as of September 2022. I was a, I did an internship with her when I was in school, and since then we built a, I would say, a great bond. And I am helping her in all of her endeavors with gaining vision, and I'm just very happy to be here. Wonderful. So, Sarah, can you introduce yourself and who's in the room with you, please? How can everybody introduce themselves? Okay, thank you so much. Um, Sarah, I go on social media as Sarah Tuaris. That's how most of the people know me, but I'm Nali Mariam Sarah, and I'm the director of Sarah's Academy, and this is my team. I'm so glad that we met, and I'm happy. So I would love each and everyone to introduce them, so say that you can know us by names, so that whenever we are using up our hands or we are contributing, you at least know that this answer came from teacher. So. So I'll start with them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good afternoon. I'm Nango Aisha, class teacher, baby class. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon. I'm Lakato Florence, class teacher, P3. Good afternoon. I'm Lange Jess Mariam, class teacher, Mido. Good afternoon. I'm Nimbesa, the class teacher. I'm Nimbesa. Yes. I want her to be in the camera, yeah. Good afternoon. I'm Nimbesa, the class teacher. Thank you. Good afternoon, members. I'm teacher Vinci Annette, class teacher of class. Good afternoon, I'm teacher Akilo Grace. We can't see you, Akilo Grace. You can stand up a little bit. Yes. Good afternoon, I'm teacher Akilo Grace, teaching from P1 of P3 English. Thanks. You're very kind. Yes. Wonderful. And then we, get, we have a volunteer who comes in and helps at the school. So it's like he doesn't have a class. It's crazy. And we can continue. <laughs> Let's carry on then. Okay, wonderful. So I want you guys to think of this as a great opportunity for us to learn together, but also to have fun. So it has to be interactive. So please put your hand up if you have a question, yell out the answer if you know, if I ask a question. The more you participate, the better it will be for all of us. And we don't claim to be experts. We're here to share our experiences 
Some of it will work for you guys, others may not. And that's okay, because together, you're going to teach us about life in Uganda and working with learners in Uganda. And we're going to tell you what we know about here in Canada. Sound good? Yes. <laughs> okay, so Sean, what do we got there? So the purpose of our session, ladies and gentlemen, our intention is to empower and support educators in Uganda. By sharing our experiences and knowledge through this training, we aim to foster a sense of confidence and inspire a greater passion for teaching. By exchanging ideas and strategies, we hope to equip you with practical tools that will enhance your teaching skills and ultimately create a positive impact on your community and learners. Together, let us embark on a journey of group, a journey of growth, learning, and empowerment. So that's the intention. And as I mentioned, you guys are the experts in Uganda. So we need to start off by learning a little bit about the situation there. So if I could ask each of you to share a little bit about your learners, maybe some of the things that you're doing in your class shared experience yes so Sarah, Sarah, i'm going to get you to ask the teachers to share their experiences with their classes yeah so um they're saying each one of you will share the experience good or bad with a class how about your class where you feel like you need improvement where you feel like you you have you have done something so if you have anything to share you can raise up your hand and i pick you maybe you could tell us the temperament of the, the those the learners are they happy are they excited are they eager to learn or are they bored what tell me a little bit about your classes tell us about the baby class how do you see the babies <laughs> all right thank you so much yeah i have a great year again good afternoon you guys my baby class day, um, I learned something from them that when I'm there and when I'm teaching them, I have to call out something like uh, eat the balls. Like, for example, I have to be with sweets mm -hmm. for them to be motivated. Yes. <clears throat> so the those members of baby class, mm -hmm. they are after those things. So if you have some eats, uh, they can, can be active. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. listening and giving me some answers, as you know. Yeah, thank you. No problem. And I did see your video recently, so I know what you're saying. Got it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, this is teacher Annette. Uh, my class, a nice class, a good class, but just I have a problem with songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. So what happened with the songs? Like you don't have enough songs. Yeah. So I don't know how yes, I don't have enough songs to when yeah, you yes, I have yes, yeah, I have to do it. What what other thing? Good thing. The good thing with the kids are they responsive, they are answer questions. Or they are dormant, they are they attending yeah, school. They can answer questions. Mm -hmm. They are so active, especially if we go in PE, but mm -hmm. just because of lacking the songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they are very active. Okay. And even the handwriting, mm -hmm. they are improving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I, and then hold on, Sarah. Sorry, I just want to make sure I heard correctly. The problem was what exactly? Songs like you know in these lower classes like the kindergarten classes you have to have the the songs oh songs okay thank you which you can, you can be singing mm -hmm. so that they can be learning through that okay perfect That's, thank yeah. you wonderful thanks for sharing thanks for the it's really in other classes mm -hmm. in English. They are catching up, but some other things also others are hard working, but others are still behind behind. Mm -hmm. And I know in time too, they'll get to understand everything. Unless they can be provided with some 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 little books, then I recommend them to be busy like story books, the novel books to improve on their language. Mm -hmm. You had that? 
Yes. So if I heard correctly, it, English is not the first language, so some are having difficulty with that. Mm. Understanding? Okay. And the resources was also something there? Yeah, like she's saying that if we can get reading books, story book, novel books for them, because for those in primary two and primary three, they are starting to read. So yes. in case we do that, for them to improve on their reading, uh, what? Yeah. So, and then also she talked about how to train them to learn a language because English is like any other language. Like if you can have skills to teach of us course. how we can teach someone to learn a new language without force or struggles. Because she okay. teaches English from primary one to primary theory. Okay, so that is something I can definitely provide at a different session. So English as a second language, correct? Yes, yes. Wonderful. And I'm taking notes just so that I have this for after, so how I can best support you guys after the session. Okay. True. Yeah. So we are going to move on just so because I'm going to be mindful of your time. But of yeah. course, there's going to be lots of opportunities to hear from everybody. So please, if I didn't get to you this time, we will get to you in the next session. Section. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least right now we are having that experience. It's their first time and mm -hmm. me too. So this is yeah. it. Exactly. You'll be feel a little bit more comfortable with me for the next time. And then we can gab, <laughs> gab, 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 right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> true, oh. true. The learning styles. So one of the most important things for us as teachers to understand is that every child is unique and different. They learn differently. And I'm sure that you've heard these different learning styles before, but I saw it's good to review before we get into the other aspects. So there are different styles that everybody, a child, even all of us learn. And it's important for us to look at what this looks like in the classroom. So the first style is, Sean, we'll go. Visual learners. So visual learners is when a child learns by seeing things. Maybe it's a picture. Uh, a diagram, a chart, they are going to learn by looking at seeing a picture. That's the way their brain works. You can tell them verbally, you can show them physically, but they won't get it unless they see it visually. So understanding how we can do this in classroom, Sean, we'll go through some of these points. Provide visually appealing diagrams, charts, and infographics that clearly summarize key information. So having fun, colorful images will help keep your learners engaged. It will also help them understand the concept you're teaching them. For example, if you want them to learn how to write the alphabet, you can tell them you do this, 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 and show them, but that's not going to help them. But you may want to have a chart with the letters in different colors. That will keep them engaged. By them looking at a picture of it, it'll help. Everything that you are teaching, having something visual for them to go along with your teachings will help them in this. Another way, Sean? Use slides with clear and organized visuals to illustrate key concepts or processes. When you think about something as simple as washing their hands before they go for lunch, if you have a poster, a chart, or a slide for any concept that's simple that you can break down with using diagrams, this is going to help them understand it. So let's say you're teaching in a classroom and you have a slide just like this one. And it's showing the, the learner step by step what you want them to do using pictures. This will help that type of learner. My favorite one here, Melanie, use props to demonstrate the concepts. Ah, yes. Think about when you do some baking or cooking. When you have the bowl and the spoon in your hand and you're showing them how to mix, you're using props. They will understand because they visually are seeing what you're doing. Watching you do with these props will help them. Sometimes props can also be used for the learners to have fun. Maybe you're going to wear a hat when you're telling a story to emphasize a point. These are the things that visual learners will remember. 
is visually what they see. Is there another one there, Sean, or we're done for that one? We have our final one here. Yes. Incorporate videos or animation and images to enhance understanding and retention. Okay, so we know that internet, I know, isn't necessarily as accessible everywhere, but sometimes if you have access to a video or some animation, kids love cartoons. They love to look at different things. So sometimes if you're able to get access to that, that will also help reinforce a concept or help them remember something. So those are just some tips. Does anyone have any questions about visual learning or can you think of one of your learners that is a visual learner? Then you bring those real things which starts, starts with the letter B and you tell them book. Yes, yes, you show you would tell the sound and then you show something which than just writing on the blackboard or just yeah. Yeah, for me, I was uh, asking about uh, the props. Was it props? Props, yeah. I, no, I do not know that meaning, but when you explained it, I get to know it is when like you tell a child to go and maybe do something. Let me say you're cooking to help you mix. Mm -hmm. Or when you're doing something or writing, tell them, help me write this. So that's what I have learned from props. When Okay, good. Thank you, Sarah. And again, if there's anything that you guys are unclear of, please ask for clarification. Thank you. You're welcome. And again, oh, there's different styles, but you, now that you, when you get these, you may want to just kind of look at your class and see the different styles of learning within your classroom, because this will help you in connecting with the learners as well as managing your classroom. What's the next style? Do we have there, Sean? Are these auditory? we have auditory learners. So now these are the learners that learn by hearing what you're saying. So when you're giving direction or you're telling the learners what they need to do, these learners learn by listening, not by visual. Mm -hmm. And what are some things in the classroom that the teachers can do, Sean? Share teaching orally. Of course. So when you're asking your class to do a task, you're going to be verbally sharing what the directions are. And this is very important to keep it age appropriate. Obviously, your older learners, you're going to use different language than you would with the babies. So making sure they understand what you're saying and you're saying it in a tone that is clear, concise and friendly. Why do I say friendly? Because sometimes as educators, we try to get firm and we try to make sure that they're understanding what we're saying, but it can mm -hmm. also be intimidating for the learner. So we want to make sure we're friendly. Next one, John. Include recordings of information, podcasts, and music and songs. Okay. So this one's really important. Yes, we're the teacher and the learners are listening to our voices all the time. By adding variety and different resources, whether it's an audio tape, something on a podcast or YouTube, that they hear a different sound of voice that can help reinforce a task or a skill, that's good too. And as we know in the music class, music is a beautiful way for learners to learn. Think about A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, you know, I can't sing, but you know, when you read, you sing the alphabet, the kids remember it because it's a song. So auditory learners really listen and learn that way. Next one, Sean. Provide examples or stories on the topics. I don't know about you guys, but I loved when I was in school, the teachers would tell us stories. Now, in Canada, we would hear a lot of fairy tales or fables that would have a moral to the story that would reinforce lessons. Something as simple as being kind, being respectful, all those simple things. But across the globe, there's many people that share historical stories, things that happened in their local culture or heritage, and also have the same value of this. So finding stories to reinforce a skill that you're teaching is really useful. And there are several resources that we're happy to share with you guys 
as well of examples of this, but it's important to make sure that we are ensuring that there's always story time in the classroom. Not only is this a learning way, but also it lets the kids ease up a little bit, relax and be more attentive. Sean, next one. Conduct interactive discussion and encourage learners to share their thoughts and ideas. A lot of times when we're teachers, we think we should be the only ones talking, but a lot of auditory learners learn by actually having a conversation with the other classmates. So having open discussion that is definitely kept on track and supervised allows the learners to express themselves as well as it helps them feel that they're being listened to. So having discussions about a topic that you're teaching them Hearing their feedback, this is a great opportunity for auditory learners. Next. Use catchy phrases to help learners remember concepts. I remember when I was young, they taught us a catchy phrase. I don't know if you've heard this. When you're learning about grammar and writing, I before E except after C. This is a great thing that even to this day I have in my head because it was catchy. It sounded cool. I wanted to remember it and it helped me. So there's a lot of catchy phrases that you can use when you're teaching the auditory learner so that they can remember them. That's it for auditory. That is all for auditory learners. Anybody have any learners in your classroom that are auditory learners or you have any questions? Okay, I was like, it helps me either to have techniques of handling a child with different, different, different problems. Like if a child has got a visual impairment, mm -hmm. so if I give him something either at a far distance and I ask, do you see? And tells me that teacher, it is very small. Therefore, I know that he has a problem with visual impairment, so I can get possible ways of handling a kid accordingly. Exactly. Understanding the needs of the learner is first and foremost. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Sean, what do we got here? Create a positive and inclusive atmosphere in the classroom where they feel safe, seen, heard, and respected. Uh, this is key. I'm sure, especially seeing the videos, you guys already do this. Making sure that the, the learners feel safe and happy in a positive atmosphere. The school is very positive. You guys are always upbeat. Everything looks beautiful. And it's a lovely place. This allows the learners to be themselves, to feel like they can open up and express themselves without any negative thoughts. So what I mean by that is even if they make a mistake, they're not going to be in trouble. They're learning and they will express themselves and try to answer questions effectively if you create this atmosphere in your classroom. It's important that every learner feels included because we know there's going to be learners that need a little bit more attention than others, but everybody needs that attention. It's hard mm -hmm. when it's only one of you though. Mm -hmm. What's next, Sean? Show genuine interest in your learners' lives. Ah. Take time to learn about their backgrounds, interests, and aspirations. This will grow rapport. Yes. So it's important to know a little bit about your the students. Sorry, we call them students in, in Canada, learners, the learners. We want to make sure that you know a little bit about them. So, for example, if Johnny loves soccer, then you could say, how is that soccer game? Or perhaps some with somebody's birthday, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> knowing that it's their birthday, you're connecting with them because you're showing genuine interest in what they like and who they are. This could take some time and it is extra pressure sometimes on teachers to have to know everybody in the class, but this will help you build that rapport with the learners and they will trust you. Next Use active listening. Pay attention to what learners say, both verbally and non-verbally. Uh, Encourage yes. them to share their thoughts, ideas, and concerns. Show understanding and empathy in your responses. So listening actively is so important because a lot of times kids like to talk just for the sake of talking. 
but really truly whenever they have something to say they are trying to communicate something to you and even if they don't talk a lot because they're shy watch mm -hmm. their body language do they like look, look afraid do they look bored that will tell you a lot as well and then by making sure that you are able to give responses to them that shows that you're listening and that you understand will help them feel heard and valued very very important sean that was our final uh point there all right so these are just some tips the other thing about connection is that when they feel included they're more likely to come to you and share things that's happening in their lives this is going to give you an insight and help you in their growth and development. If they're having trouble with another learner, they're feeling hungry, whatever the situation may be, if they trust you and you've built that rapport, they're more likely to open up to you. And then it'll be a more successful relationship in the classroom and you will have more success teaching them. Any questions about connecting with the learners? Yes, I have a concern. Yes. Last time we, uh, in baby class, there is this. There are two kids who are really unresponsive. Like you don't know if they are happy or they are sad. If they want to come in class or not. When they sit this side, that way until the day goes. If they are looking behind, even if you do what, they will not change. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, like, how can we handle such kids? Because at least in each class, at least we have someone with all those inabilities. We can call it inabilities because that's not normal. Even if you say what or do what or say what, they will not listen to you. Even they, are, they don't have friends. They, they are just quiet, the whole class. And then early morning, they come to school. And I try to, to talk to the parents, but they also have no idea how they can help their kids. So maybe if there is any way we can see how can we handle such, because we want to know is the problem at home? Is it at school? She doesn't want to come to school or she's just like, she can't do anything, but she does. She knows how to talk, but maybe when they are open, like playing outside, maybe. But if you ask a question, nothing. You can so, take that without <laughs> talking. This happens a lot. And again, it's hard to read their minds, isn't it? So mm. there's a couple of things you can try out. Obviously, observe them in all different situations. On the outside playing with their friends or by themselves. Also, if you give them some paper and a pencil, ask them to draw you a picture. Sometimes they'll draw something that you didn't know. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, and try different materials to get them to see what they like. Perhaps get them to help out a teacher. So what I mean by that is sometimes they need the attention. Sometimes they need to feel special and trust you. So maybe there's an activity that you need some assistance handing something out or, I don't know, cleaning the chalkboards. You could ask can I have your help? And you build that rapport and trust, then they're going to feel that they can open up to you. It does take time. It's not going to happen overnight because obviously something is impacting them. Maybe it's the fear of saying something wrong. Maybe there's something more, but in order to find out, you have to observe. And again, we're gonna send you these resources. And if you have questions or concerns after that you forgot to ask, you can contact me, okay? <laughs> Someone have something to say. Yes, did I say Thank you? For me, my class one, I have a child. I realized that he's having a problem with the eyes. Mm -hmm. Doesn't see well. He was sitting behind. Then he, I decided he came to sit in front. But even now, it's not seeing well. Okay. I'm so sorry, I didn't hear you. <laughs> yeah, she's saying that in primary one, there is a student. Uh, he doesn't see on the blackboard. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's what we need to do. 
can I, can I, I can definitely help you with that one. Um, but I well, want to do a separate session with that because that is very, very, very detailed. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we will definitely set up a separate time to talk about that, but I have a lot of different concepts that you can help with that. Thank you. Yes, yeah, my pleasure. All right, we're going to keep going because we have uh, two more areas to cover that I think are very important. Self-care and self-love. All right, ladies. So this is where I come in. As I mentioned, I met Melanie again as of September 2022, and I said that I was in school studying. So what I was studying is in the field of social work. So literally just helping community, helping youth helping seniors pretty much helping populations that aren't the dominant population here in Canada. So one thing I've learned with my undertaking my schooling was self care and self love. And what that just means in a broad picture is that we as women as caregivers as teachers we always want to give. We want to give as much as we can to everybody. But the person that we don't take care of enough is ourselves. So, you know, we get exhausted doing activities. You're tired. You know, you have families. You're looking after your family. You're looking after your kids. You might be even looking after your extended family. But you need to practice self-care. So what self-care will look like is doing something that you enjoy. If that is to say a hobby, um, if that is taking a walk in your area, or maybe it can actually be family time where you just sit down and do something with the family, maybe once a month, you know, once every two weeks, something that just you like to do. And when I talk about self love, again, it might sound the same thing as self care. That's where you're actually informing yourself. You know what? I am unique. There's only one of me in this entire world. Somebody might have my same name, but there's nobody like me. Celebrate your, even like how Melanie said, you, you know, you want to celebrate your learner's small wins. Celebrate your own wins. Celebrate that you woke up. Celebrate that you came to the academy. Celebrate that you get to teach your learners from whatever age they are. Celebrate that you had a great, um, a great, just a teaching plan for the day. Celebrate that you did something different that you thought maybe you will never know about. And be authentic to yourself as well. Own your own happiness. So again, it relates to self-care. If you want to go on a walk, go on a walk. Like for myself, I, I don't know why I do this, but I do it. I like running. It's not a favorite thing, but that's my self-care. I know if I don't run, I feel awkward. I just feel like I need to do something. But on the run, I'm tired. I tell myself, why am I doing it? But I get to be with nature. I get to be outside. I get some exercise. Then I feel healthy, happy about myself. So some things just on the slide. And Melanie said that you could do for your learners, but you could do for yourself as well. Journaling. You could write down, okay, Today is Wednesday, June 28th. How was my day? What did I learn? What was my takeaways? And then just say after a whole year, you have your schooling diary and you can see what you've accomplished, where you are frustrated, and then you can, you can improve upon that. Uh, meditation is another self-care, self-love and mindfulness. Just being aware of where you are physically who you are surrounded with and being in the moment with your, with your learners. Cause I know for myself, I always like to think of the future. What am I going to do tomorrow? Okay. I got to make a task. I have a plan, but that doesn't mean I'm in the present. I'm not enjoying who I'm with and what I'm doing. So try to stay centered, even though I know I'm saying all of this, it's a work in progress and I'm working on it as well. So I just want to say again, thank you for, you know, being here with us and 
listening to my little self-care self-love and I'll give it back to Melanie now. Yeah, I just want to add to it. Everybody's definition of self-care and self-love is going to be different. I love to read. I love to watch my YouTube. I have to watch Sarah all the time. (laughs) I love getting my nails done. But other things that people like to do is watch TV, listen to music, anything that you like, like Arlene was saying, is personal to you. But the most important thing is you have to take care of you because without you, the learners don't have teachers. Burnout is high in the education field because it is exhausting because we give so much like Arlene said. So please take the time every day, even 15 minutes for yourself. It is so important because we need you, we value you. And Sarah will tell you this over and over again, she couldn't do what she does without you guys. So now I'm gonna open the floor to you guys. We've talked, talked, talked now. Again, there was a slide I missed. We're gonna send everything to you. You can read it, we can, you can contact me and ask any questions, but I do have two questions. First of all, was this helpful for you? And secondly, can you help me make a list of supplies the schools need for your classrooms? Those are my questions. So was this helpful? To me, um, it was very, very helpful. I'm so glad that I w- we were able to make this because we have been talking about this. And in my mind, I was like, God help me. I want this to come when the teachers are around, when I'm around and even the internet. But thank God, everything was available though. We had issues with the laptop, but again, we managed to make it through. So I'm so grateful about that. And I have learned a lot. Um, as a leader, I also have to know because I have also a team that I'm leading, that I'm teaching, that I need more of this to help them so that they can help the kids. So thank you so much for having the time and for calling up your colleagues to come and join us. I know it's not an easy thing, but I'm so grateful for them. May God bless them. Um, I think they will tell us what they need in their classrooms. Okay. And we can get them. But for me, it was very useful to me. I'm glad. And Sarah, thank you so much for the opportunity to connect with you and with your teachers. It was so much fun for us. We love this. And again, as I mentioned, Sarah, this is not a one-time deal. You guys have anything else you want help? We can share our experiences. Again, we're not the experts. We want to just share what we know, what what works for us, and perhaps Mm. it may work for you, perhaps it won't, but we can collaborate any time. Okay. So how about from the teachers? Are you happy? Are you feeling overwhelmed? Are you like, oh, what a waste of time? (laughs) What is it? Yeah, uh, teachers are saying something. All right, thank you so much. For me, I'm very grateful to have this uh, it is called a meeting, a seminar, so I'm very grateful, I'm very happy. Um, you say that we have to ask something or to tell you something we are missing in our classes. Mm-hmm. Me, as a baby teacher, I'm laughing very many things there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do yeah. you want to make a list and give it to Sarah to send to me? Okay, thank you, I'll make. And if that's best for everybody else, I'm fine with that. I'll just let you know what I'm planning to do is different organizations here in Canada that we can submit a letter of requests for donations. And I'm going to show them all the beautiful things you guys are doing. And I'll put it into a nice package. And I'm going to share it with a lot of teacher resource centers and see what I can come up with. And then we will get it to Uganda for you guys. Okay, then teacher, I would have something to say. Yes, please. Our dear teacher, thank you for today. And I know it is not only today. That's <laughs> so right. thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Uh, my request is I'd like to get handwriting books and then at least to help me because my problem was songs. So yes. I don't know how you will help me. Mm-hmm. And then playing games. Games, okay. What type yes. of games? 
I'm playing games for age five to seven. Five to seven. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I've got it. This is good. Now, with the songs, do you want the music? Do you want it in writing? Do you want it both? One written or the, the real song? Both. Both. Okay. Yeah, she likes both. And yeah, the one she can read and then sing, and then one she can listen, and then maybe in we, we may even have a speaker where we can take it in class and she puts maybe a memory card or a flash card and then they start singing along it. Cause we can't be able to be going on the internet every day because it's very expensive. It needs, cause I'm me, most of the time I'm not around. And when I'm around, I'm busy using my phone because I, yeah. Of course, absolutely. Okay, so. Yeah, there's a, a some question because we had an issue about the reading mm -hmm. and writing of videos. Mm -hmm. Now we just try, I will, it was just a request. Mm -hmm. Yes. That but, okay, let me just first bring out a word of sans because mm -hmm. I never thought. Ah yeah. But I'm saying us. I first was looking for the Almighty God for that day. May he take the glory and may he reward you people about that list. Thanks for your time. Thanks for educating us. That lesson was very interesting and good. It has encouraged me and my colleagues too. But I had a simple request that to improve on the hand and eye coordination for the learners, at least provide us with some materials like reading books, the novels, what what poems, and Handwriting, because we need to bring up good printers, the printer people, we need to have lecturers, lecturers in turn, the lawyers, so that good printing and good speaking they want to be. Thank you. All right, so printer, you mean for the computer, yes? Yeah. Okay, you have to tell me what type of uh, computer you have, so make sure it's compatible. That's the information, Sarah, I'll need from you. Um, but mm -hmm. I, and then of course you'll need paper to go with that, Nate. It have issues. I, I would just first take it to the there and see if they can fix it. Mm -hmm. If not, then there will be issues. But so, you need more than one printer. So <laughs> you can't just have one for the whole school. So, okay. The reason why, because here's the thing. What we mm -hmm. understand is what you guys are doing is you're laying the foundation for these children. They're going to go on to the next level and then new ones are going to come through. So it's an ongoing process. So as many resources as we can get that can be used over and over again will be something that yeah. I What? Mm, good, good. There are also these writing pads. I don't know how they call them, but I know they are writing pads. You write a word, let me say you can, you give it to a child, it's like this. They get it, it does also have a pen where you write and then you raise it. And then still, if you tell them to do something, they write, then you raise it. Those ones are much better than a book because in the book, they are still young. They would finish the book in just a day. But if we have that where they can write and rise and we still continue using it, I think it will be better for the kids. In that time, maybe we want them to, to do something, try something. I'm thinking maybe some whiteboards where you it like use erasable markers. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, excellent. So I've got a good starting point, but again, make a list, guys. Think of your own personal classroom. And then Zara, of course, you do for the school like as a whole. And then please yeah. send it to me and we will be working on it on our end. Okay, so they are saying you can write down the things that you feel like you need in a class. You write it down, then we we'll see what we can get. Or oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys. Have a wonderful evening. We're gonna start our day now, okay? <laughs> because it's okay. ten o'clock here. So thank you for the opportunity. And again, it's the first time we'll be meeting. I look forward to seeing you again. Reach out anytime, and Sarah, I'll reach out to you later today, okay? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank we really do appreciate. It. My pleasure. Thank you guys, Sean, Arlene. Thank you. Have Thank a good Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you very yeah. much, everybody. It was great meeting everyone. Have a great day.
Until next time, take a second, hit subscribe. Please don't forget to like and share and definitely hit that notification button so you'll be notified each and every time that I upload new material. Till next time, see you later.